A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. mathematician Sway come back to the first video of 2022. It's good to be back but I was seriously I wasn't lazy. I mean over on Flamey's Wood I was still posting a lot of videos but I needed a small creative break from YouTube um, for half a month but now I'm back and I'm going to post regularly once again with a bunch of cool new topics like quantum calculus and the like coming very soon. A whole new series. It's going to be very exciting. By the way, have you pre-registered for my mobile game WAC already? So when developing WAC, we really wanted to make sure that... No, no, no get out. I'm, I'm begging for money. If you want to know more about WAC, well, um, basically it's, it's WAC. Pre-register. Link down there in the description. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it's going to release sometime in March, I think. Yeah, <laughs> those were basically all the PSAs and now we are going to dive right in. Now, I looked through my number theory playlist and a bunch of other videos I did and I noticed something. I never talked about the logarithm of a negative base, okay? So consider, for example, the logarithm of base negative 5 of, I don't know, um, let's go with 6, <laughs> because <laughs> 6 is a pretty funny number, am I right? Yeah, I know, really doesn't matter which numbers we have. And we are going to basically turn this into something which does make sense to us at this point. Now, in school you might have heard that it's not possible to have logarithms of negative bases, but they also probably told you that it's not possible with the regularly real defined logarithm to have negative arguments for example but we have debunked this myth before linked on the description um, to the corresponding video now we are going to use a trick at first which is my most favorite log property it's the most useful log property there is because each and every logarithm to some certain base of something can be expressed in a different kind of way namely as the quotient of natural logarithms for example or the quotients of uh, logarithms to base 10 or whatever and for this we are just going to take a look at the inverse problem of logarithmian, of taking the logarithm, you could say. At first, a to the b is equal to c. Okay, let's say that a to the b has some solution equal to c. And what we are going to do now is, in normal case, to solve for the b up here, because in normal case you want to find the ex exponent for such that a to the certain exponent, you are going to get c out. We are going to apply the logarithm base a on both sides. If we do this, then we are going to get that, well, logarithm base a means that the base a is going to cancel out, giving us just the exponent by dragging it to the front using the logarithm properties. b is equal to the logarithm base a of c, which is exactly of this form. Now we can go a completely different route. What we could also do is we could apply some random arbitrary logarithm on both sides. And the most useful logarithm that can pop up and which we know about most is the logarithm base e, natural log. Now what we are going to do, and for this, just because we are using a lot of logs here, I'm going to use ln for once as natural logarithm. I'm not doing this in normal case, but for this video I'm going to do so. Let's apply the natural log on both sides. So ln of a to the b power. It seriously feels weird to write ln. I'm not used to this. This feels seriously weird. I want to write log. Um, it's equal to the ln of c. Now by logarithm properties we can bring the b to the front giving us overall that b times the ln of a is equal to the ln of c. Now the only thing left to do is to divide both sides by ln of a under the condition that's not equal to zero meaning a must not be equal to one. B is hence equal to the ln of C divided by the ln of A. Now, we, we know what B is. B is logarithm base A of C. But on the other hand, it's also ln of C divided by ln of A. This is quite curious and by far the most useful log property that is out there. Meaning, each logarithm to the base A of C can be expressed as some random arbitrary logarithm quotient okay, of the same logarithm of c divided by the natural log in our case of a. Okay, I hope you can see that you can express it by each and every means of logarithm here, even logarithm base pi, even though this doesn't make too much sense, I don't think you are going to use this um, ever, but 
up here you can see that we can just apply for example the ln and for our purposes this is perfect and by using this property well we can rewrite our log base negative 5 of 6 as the natural log of okay c is the thing in the argument so the ln of 6 divided by the ln of negative 5 glad we did the video on logarithm of negative arguments before because if you have watched this video you know that we can express the logarithm of negative 5 for example as the addition of the logarithm of the positive number in here basically the absolute value of negative 5 which is 5 so this is the ln of 6 and if you don't know what I'm talking about link down in the description divided by the ln of 5 plus and now hmm, what is the other thing? Let's take a look at the complex plane for this, shall we? This right here is just a regular um, logarithmic property, basically, which also applies on the principal branch, or if you just take a look at the other branches, um, just in individually, you're going to get that this is the ln of negative one, okay? So net, natural log of five times um, negative one, okay? natural log of negative 5, which is going to be like this, if you break it up using the log properties. And if we take a look at the complex plane now, it's going to make a lot more sense. Now, for example, if you want to get the natural log of negative 1, now this is our main player here, natural log of 5, okay, this is nicely defined, we know what this is, it has some value at least, and natural log of negative 1. Um, hmm. What's natural log of negative one? At first, let us take a look at just some random arbitrary complex number. Let's say that, let's say that Z is some complex number, okay? In normal case, you can write it as A plus IB, where A is the real part and B the imaginary part, or in the Euler form, R times E to the R far. Now, R is the radius, basically the length of our complex vector, the magnitude, and far is the angle being enclosed by the real line and also our number, okay, our complex number. Now, if we take a look at, at negative one, for example, negative one is over here, we are going to start here at one, okay, it has a magnitude of one, obviously, this vector, since from zero to negative one, we have a length of, of one, meaning our set is going to just turn into e to the alpha. And now what we are going to do is we are going to track our vector to negative one. How can we do this? Well, by rotating it pi to the left. Okay, meaning on the one hand, negative one is the same as e to the i pi. But we can go further. One other person could say, okay, I want to go the other direction. Okay, I want to go counterclockwise. That's a rotation of negative pi. Some other guy says, okay, um, I like to do it twice. I like to go to negative one at first and then, well, back to one and once again to negative one, meaning he's going to do more than a full rotation, meaning this is par, two par, three par, and so on. I hope you can see a pattern. Namely, the complex number negative one can be expressed in the complex plane as being, okay, what is the argument right here, our angle far? This is going to be e to the i. Okay, so we are going to go through all the iterations of pi, three pi, five pi, negative pi, negative three pi, and so on. Those are all the k times pi, where k is element of the odd integers, you can say. Meaning, our angle that we are going to have up here is pi times 2k plus 1, where k is element of the positive and negative integers. And this does make sense. Let's put in um, k being equal to 2, then we are going to get 2 times 2, which is 4 plus 1 is 5. So e to the i, 5 pi, okay, going around once and then another time, it's going to give us negative 1 once again. And this works out. And if we now apply the natural log to e to the i pi times 2k, we are going to get out overall that the natural log to the base negative 5 of 6 is equal to natural log of 6 divided by the natural log of 5 plus, hmm, applying natural log here means that natural log and e is going to cancel out, giving us overall just i par 2k plus 1. Yeah, and this right here is <laughs> yeah, our log base negative 5 of 6. And you can generalize this to every random arbitrary log base a of c. Plug a into here, c down here, and then you are basically done. One very cool one, which turns out very nicely, okay, at least on the principal branch of the complex logarithm. If we take a look at, for example, the log 
um, of base negative 1 of e. This way, by this generalization, we are going to get the natural log of e up here divided by, hmm, then we are going to get the natural log. Okay, let's go up here, natural log of negative 1, but we know what that is. Okay, let's take a look at the principal branch here. Natural log of negative 1, the principal branch, is going to give us just on the very first rotation, okay, this is going to give us i times pi b, because k is equal to zero there, on the zero of rotation basically, zero of iteration, giving us just um, e to the i pi, the natural log is going to cancel out with the e, giving us the natural log of e divided by i pi. But the cool thing about natural log of e is that it's nothing other than one. Meaning overall, oh, I'm, I'm going to put it here, that log to the negative one base of e is equal to 1 divided by i pi. And this is actually one of my most favorite definitions of pa, namely if we were to multiply both sides by pa, and if we were to expand this fraction by i, okay, then we're going to get i times i is negative 1, so a negative sign here, putting i to the top, and then we're going to divide both sides by this part, leaving us overall that pa can be expressed by negative i divided by log base negative 1 of e. Yeah, that's a cool definition. I mean, <laughs> I really like this one. And to be completely um, rigorous, what we need to do is we need to say this is the um, principal logarithm still, okay, to the base negative 1 of e. Yeah, I like this identity. It's cool. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, then maybe you do also enjoy the contents of today's sponsor, Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor Flamble Maths also in 2022. Now this right here shifted over to complex numbers fairly quickly and I also leave it as an exercise to the viewer to figure out a general identity for if you have a negative base and also a negative argument in here. But those were all fun and games, but complex numbers are way more than just playing around with logarithms and the complex plane like this. Complex numbers also have to do with fractals, polar coordinates and all this other crazy stuff that you find in higher mathematics. And if you are interested in things like these, then Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. They are one of the best source for online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. With the nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, computer sciences, etc., they basically get you up to pace on each and every topic that you want to learn about. And the interactive learning concept is seriously brilliant. Pun definitely intended. Um, if you are taking a look at the courses, they are going to guide you through all the topics that you want to learn about very intuitively and hands-on. Hands-on in the truest sense of the word. You are going to use your hands, your mouse, to play around with graphs, levers, take a look at the complex plane and how the angle is going to change by rotating the complex number, for example. It's seriously cool to have this interactive learning experience and it's going to help you and especially beginners in a certain kind of topic to learn something new fairly easily and also fairly quickly. So if this feels like a something for you, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brain.org slash fandlemass. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brain already, but more importantly, the first 200 people to make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is freaking nice considering how much content they have available on their website already. And seriously, the interactive learning learning concept that they have on their website is seriously good. It also helps me learn something new basically on a weekly basis. I'm there all the time and I seriously like this website and after over two years I'm still not done with all their courses which is seriously ridiculous. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and other than that, yeah, what can I say? Whack! Pre-register. See ya!